Good day Grade 11s, welcome to the first lesson in week 23. In this lesson we're going to be looking at electrostatics and in this section we're going to be looking not just at plain electrostatics but we're going to be looking at electric fields and electromagnetism and then moving more into electromagnetism. But this specific lesson is mainly on or only on electric fields. So let's go through it. Hello Grade 11s and welcome back to our series on electrostatics. Just as there is a magnetic field around magnets, there is also an electric field around charged objects. In today's lesson, we are going to study the electric field around charged objects in more detail. Let us join KK as she does some investigations with electric fields. First, she will use a Van der Graaff generator to demonstrate some interesting observations. Hi there. Welcome back to our series on electrostatics. Let's first very quickly recap what we have already learned about objects that are charged with static electricity. In our previous two lessons, we have discovered that there are two kinds of charges, negative charges and positive charges. Opposite charges attract and like charges repel one another. Charged objects can cause things to move even if they are not touching them. Where have you come across a similar set of properties before? Right, when you learned about magnets. In the series of lessons of magnetism, we use the idea of magnetic fields around magnets to explain this behavior. In today's lesson, I would like us to do a couple of experiments to investigate the electric field around charged objects. I am going to use the Van der Graaff generator to charge a number of different objects. When a metal conductor is connected to the terminals of the machine, it will become charged. When it is connected to the positive terminal, it becomes positively charged. When it is connected to the negative terminal, it becomes negatively charged. We will use flat metal plates as well as circular conductors in our experiments. We will also use some grass seeds sprinkled in oil so that we can see the patterns that the electrical fields form. Grass seeds are tiny insulators and will move in an electric field. In the first experiment, we are going to find out what the electric field between two oppositely charged electric plates looks like. I will place two metal plates parallel to each other in a dish containing some oil. One metal plate is positively charged and the other plate is negatively charged. Watch carefully what happens to the grass seeds between the two plates. Why don't you try and draw or describe the pattern that you see? Do you see that the grass seeds arrange themselves in straight lines between the two parallel metal plates? I have a diagram here on the smart board that may help you see the pattern more clearly. Each of the lines in the diagram is called an electric field line. The arrows that are on the lines show the path that a positively charged particle would follow if it were free to move in an electric field. Remember, a positively charged particle will always move away from a positively charged object and towards a negatively charged object. This takes place even when the charged objects do not touch. This force of repulsion is due to the electric field. In the next experiment, we're going to find out what an electric field around a positively charged conductor looks like. A conductor is connected to the positive terminal of the Van der Graaff generator and then placed in a dish containing some oil. Once again, I sprinkle some grass seeds onto the oil surrounding the charged conductor. What effect does a single positively charged object have on the grass seeds? The grass seeds collect around the charged object, which now looks like a fuzzball. Other grains form lines that radiate outwards away from the charged object. This diagram may help you to see the pattern more clearly. Electric field lines radiate outwards from the charged object to form a radial electric field. Did you notice that the electric field lines are closer together near the charged object? This tells us that the electrical forces of attraction and repulsion are stronger near to the object. As the electrical field lines diverge further away from the object, the electrical forces of attraction and repulsion get weaker. What do you think the electric field lines would look like if the conductor was connected to the negative terminal of the Van der Graaff generator? Why don't you take a shot at drawing a sketch to show the pattern of these field lines? 
Well, were you right? Check that your arrows are pointing in the right direction. In our third experiment, we're going to find out what the electrical field between two positively charged conductors looks like. Two conductors are placed near each other in a dish containing some oil. One conductor is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. Once more, try to draw the pattern that you see. Don't forget to put arrows on the electric field lines in your drawing. Was your drawing like this one? If it is, well done. I think you may just be getting the hang of this. In our last experiment, we're going to find out what an electric field between two positively charged conductors looks like. Two conductors are placed near each other in a dish containing some oil. Both conductors are positively charged. Here is the diagram showing the electrical field line pattern around these two conductors. You should be able to see that the electric field lines from the two conductors seems to be forced away from each other. They seem to repel each other sideways. Why do you think this happens? Think about what happens to a freely moving positive charge situated in the electric field. As it repelled and moves away from one positively charged conductor, it's affected by the other positively charged conductor, which also repels it, causing it to veer away to the side. Let's look at the diagrams from the last two experiments again. The patterns shown by these two electric fields looks very familiar, don't they? Compare the patterns of the two electric fields and these two magnetic fields. Can you see the similarities between these two types of fields? Thanks, Keke, for those demonstrations. Now, let's have a quick recap of what we have learned in today's lesson. One, charged objects have an electric field around them. Two, electric fields can be represented by electric field lines. Three, the direction of the field line is the direction that will be taken by a freely moving positively charged particle at that point in the electric field. Four, Charged objects of different shapes have different electric field patterns. Five, pairs of charged objects of different shapes also have different electric field patterns between them. And finally, there are similarities between magnetic fields and electric fields. Right, grade 11, so now you've seen from the Van der Graaff generator the different types of electric fields. So I've just included a picture here just to remind you what you've seen. The first thing was that we had um, two straight plates. And remember they saw that the electric field was basically straight lines going from the positive to the negative plate. And remember the electric field is defined as how a positive point charge would act in that field. That is how the electric field line is drawn. Yeah, we've got a point source. And again, as shown in the video, we don't know if this is a positive or a negative point source because it is going to radiate out. And yeah, we can see that we've got two oppositely charged point sources. And the most important thing that I want you to realize is that even though it looks like it, these field lines never cross. These are similarly charged, either both positive or negative. And then this one, I don't think they're covered in the video. And if you have a circular container, um, just a coil or a circle, what you would see is that there would be nothing in here, but that this would act as a point source and this would be radiating out just like this, okay? So if we had to draw it, if this is a positive point charge, remember this is an electric field line, it would move outwards because the electric field line is defined as how the positive point charge would move out. Then we've got opposites. Most importantly, what you need to realize is, again, the field lines never cross each other. They are closest together where the field is strong and further apart when the field is weak. And they're always 90 degrees to the surface. So what's actually happening here is that this field line is radiating out and it would carry on straight except that it's now being attracted to the negative charge which is why you've got your positive point charge moving around like that. Similarly here, yeah, you've got a positive point charge which is being pushed out by this positive point charge and if there wasn't this it would go straight out like that. Okay, but as it comes out it feels the field from this one and it repels out and that's why it bends around. 
And then the last thing I need to talk to you about is this. So if we had infinitely long straight charges, I mean straight plates, okay, then we would have this beautiful equal electric field between the two plates. But you will notice that towards the end of the field it starts curving. And the reason it starts curving is because these ends here act like your point charges. So they act like that. So if you had to look at this from the side, it would look like this. Where this would be the positive and that end there would be the negative and that is why the field starts bending because it is actually mimicking this positive to negative point charge. Okay, right, the grade 11, you not only need to understand and learn the points that we've spoken about in the video, but you guys need to be able to draw these electric fields for your exams. So please go study them, make sure you understand what's going on and then go practice the questions in the assessment. Have a great day.